So to create a pH curve, we're going to have to set up our apparatus like this. Now what I've done is I've taken a stir station and I have it up underneath this bowl. Above that I put this ring. This metal ring is designed, and I'll move this kind of a little bit out of the way so you can see that. That metal ring right there is designed or put there so it will give some stability to the bowl so it doesn't tip over. Uh, I've added the pH probe uh, onto this ring stand with a clamp and I've made sure that the pH probe is in the acid solution. And then I've turned, I've got a stir bar in here and I've got it on so the stir bar is constantly turning so it'll constantly dissolve the new titrant solution that I add to the acid and we get a good result. So once everything's hooked up, we're going to hook up the pH probe to the Vernier LabQuest. Uh, it goes in the top here. We're going to connect to the computer using a USB cable. We have power hooked up here on this side. And so all of this is being registered in a computer. It's being recorded in the computer when we use it. If you're producing your titration curve using a burette, you want to open up this program. It's Logger Pro 24A Acid-Based Titration. To do that, you're going to click on the folder that's in the upper left-hand corner here, and it may open up immediately to Chemistry with Veneer, and you can choose 24A. If it doesn't, you may have to go to My Computer, and in My Computer, you'll find DHS Student Works. In DHS Student Works, you're going to have to find Vernier Labs. In Vernier Labs, you're going to find Chemistry with Vernier, and that's where you'll find this program 24A. Uh, before I actually start collecting any data, I need to calibrate the pH probe. And so I need to take the pH probe, rinse it off carefully, and I want to insert the pH probe ultimately into this uh, pH 7 buffer solution. So to calibrate the pH meter, we're going to click Experiment, click Calibrate, then pH, and make sure your setting is on two-point calibration. So we will click on Calibrate now. We'll enter the buffer solution pH reading under Reading 1. Click Keep. Rinse it off in between. Okay. And then insert it into the pH 4. It doesn't really matter whether you put in the pH 7 or the pH 4 first, just as long as you use both of those. Enter the value of the pH for that second buffer solution in reading 2, press keep, and then press done. Then once the pH probe has been properly calibrated, we're ready to insert it back into the acid solution. Now, in this bowl, there's kind of an indentation down here around the edges. This pH probe needs to go down into that indentation, so the sensor here in the very tip of the probe is actually in the acid solution like that. Now alternatively, instead of setting it up with the pH probe in a clamp, we could be using a drop counter, in which case the pH probe goes in this slot here, and you're going to set it up so your reservoir drips your solution through this drop counter, through this slot. If you use the drop counter, it's very important that you're careful not to have any of the titrant solution actually hit the side of the drop counter. The reservoir for this, I keep it in this to protect it, is plastic and it, it kind of wiggles around. You have to be really, really careful with it to allow those drops to fall through here so they don't strike the sides. Once it strikes the sides, that solution will get into the electronics and will mess them up. And so eventually it'll stop working and they're kind of expensive to replace. So you need to be very careful about that. If you're going to use the drop counter, you have to calibrate the drop counter. And the way you do that is you uh, put some, just water is good, in the, in the um, reservoir. And you put a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder underneath. You have the computer calibrate for the number of drops. And what you're going to do is you're going to uh, have it start counting drops in the calibration system. Start counting drops uh, until you fill say about 9 milliliters of that graduated cylinder. And then you're just going to calibrate it for that 9 milliliters. And what happens is the computer automatically figures out what volume each drop on average has, and that's how you use the drop counter. So you can allow the drop counter just to drop, 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 drop through there to get your pH curve 
or you can use the burette. The burette actually measures out the volume that you're using. Now, burettes are designed so that this um, number at the top is zero, and what what's at the bottom is 50. Sometimes it has different measurement units, but that's what this one has. And so what this is designed to do is to measure the amount of liquid that comes out, not the amount of liquid that is inside the burette. And you have to make sure that you're measuring the correct number of significant digits. And make sure you're measuring in the right direction. Make sure that when you're measuring for the correct number of significant digits, you remember how to estimate the last digit. That is to say, this particular burette has markings at the one milliliter marks, and there are 10 markings in between. So if the meniscus is here, say where about my thumb is, this would read, let's say, 6.4, but I want to estimate one more mid digit beyond 6.4. I'd say 6.43, for example. You have to be careful about how you do your measurements. Now, this has to be clamped onto this ring stand. And this is called a burette clamp. Now, there are different types of burette clamps. They might look different. Some are plastic and some are metal, like this one. And, but they're all designed so you squeeze on these little tabs here at the end and it opens up the clamp and you just put that in there like that and it's pretty stable. And then you can adjust how much liquid is coming out. And you have to fill this burette with the titrant solution. And you need to make sure that you drain some of that titrant solution through the tip before you start so that whatever was in here before is completely cleared out. I filled the burette with my titrant solution. Now I want to clear the tip. And I'm simply going to open up the burette like this and allow some fluid to flow through and get all the bubbles out. You saw it might have seen a bubble go through there. And then close it up. And now I've got enough of that base solution flowing through here to completely clear out all the distilled water that would have been otherwise trapped here in the tip and would have affected my pH. So I've put enough uh, titrant solution into the burette. So I've got a little more a little bit above zero here, and I'm going to simply drain out enough of the solution so I get it down to exactly zero, and then I'm ready to start doing the titration. I'm going to clamp my burette now into the burette clamp. Turn the numbers so they're toward me. I can read them easier. You can use a card that I've made up like this. They're in the top right lab drawer. That's where they should be. So put behind your burette to read the numbers a little bit more easily, to read the bottom of the meniscus a little more easily. But now we're ready to start adding solution to that. So the first data point you're going to collect will be when you have no titrant added to your acid at all. And then you're going to add a little more base to it and stop and keep each of these data points. And the way you do that is um, you're going to add a little bit of base solution to it watching the pH. I can see the pH changing here. And it has to take a minute or two for it to sort of stabilize. If it doesn't stabilize, you have to wait for the solutions to sort of mix together really good to get it to stabilize. And being off uh, just a little bit, maybe a hundredth of a pH is not a bad thing here, but this is pretty good now. Now I'm going to press key, and I'm going to enter the amount of volume of solution that I've added to the acid. And as you go along, you'll have to keep at putting the total amount in there. Um, if you have to refill your burette, then you're going to have to add the new volume to the old volume that you dispensed from the burette. At this point in time, I've got about, let's see, 10.38 milliliters. 10.38 milliliters. I'm going to press OK. And you can see that the line is slightly beginning to curve up. If you're getting dots for your data, then you can click on options over here, graph options, unclick point symbols, and click connect points. This is one of the very few labs where it's OK to have a connect the dot type of graph. And we'll keep doing this until we get a complete pH curve. So as you're collecting data, you may see something like this and start to worry, oh no, I've got this really huge upward swing. But take a look over here on the left side of the um, graph and take a note of what your scale is. 
the graph will auto scale so you can see what's going on. If you want to see what's really going on, let's go ahead and put that on a scale where you had 0 to 14. And you can see you really don't have too much of an in uptick, uptick just yet. But we are beginning to swing upwards, so we start to want to be very careful about the amount of solution we're putting in here. If you've been putting in, um, say, 5 milliliters each time, you just cut it back to 2 milliliters. When you start to have a real steep incline, just the beginning of a real steep incline, you've got to stop and put in one drop at a time to find that um, point of inflection on the graph um, which is called the equivalence point, the almost vertical part of the graph. So, I completely emptied out the burette of the titrant. I was very careful to make sure that I didn't go past the 50 mark down here. If you go past the 50 mark, there are no more markings down here to actually measure the volume of titrant you're putting into your analyte. So I was very careful to make sure I stopped at 50, and then I made sure I refilled it up to exactly the zero mark. I'm ready to restart. As I add more of this titrant into the analyte, I want to make sure that I put in the longer probe whatever the new value is plus this 50 milliliters. And for this particular acid, I had to refill the burette a third time. So I'm going to use the interpolate function now to examine this graph. Analyze, interpolate. And you can see that this vertical line can be moved along the curve we have at any point and examine what's going on. I appear to have an outlier right there. So I've somehow had the pH rise up above where it seems to. It seems that there's a nice straight line curve, or a nice smooth curve anyway, from here to here, but there's a data point that's off a bit. That's okay. Those kind of things happen. That's called experimental error. What's really clear is that this cliff face right here is where one of the um, inflection points on the graph is located. And that means there must be an equivalence point right along there. And then there's another one somewhere along this cliff face. So what I want to do is examine that a little bit. So I'm going to go over here to Options. Let me click on the graph first. Click Options, Graph Options, Axes Options. And instead of looking at pH here, I want to look at the first derivative. What I can see is at the points, let me move this box out of the way a bit. I've got a nice high point right there. Well, that's where that first cliff face is located. If I shift this very carefully to the right there, I can see that's my peak on the first derivative. That corresponds to the steepest point on the curve. It shows where the curve was leaning, um, swinging upward and then started swinging over. At that point, that's where it happened. So I can look at the volume and see the volume of the titrate that I used at this point was 35.998 or 36.00 if I'm rounding off to the number of significant digits I have in the graph 36.00 milliliters of base that was used. So I want to record this, record this graph and make sure that I write down that this is showing that I have an inflection point, an equivalence point at 36.00. I move to the right a little bit and there's the point where I had that pH that seemed to be off a little bit. That's an outlier right there. Go back over here and I can see this. This is where the second cliff face is located. And if I'm really careful about how I move this around, I can find that cliff, the point of the peak right there. Now what I can do is when I get close to that, I can use my right or left arrow on the computer keyboard to move it just a little bit at a time like this and find the exact peak. There's the peak right there. That tells me that the second inflection point and the second equivalence point is at 72.61 milliliters of the titrant, the KOH solution that was used. All right, let's examine our second derivative now. Go back to um, graph options. I'll click on the graph options, graph options, and instead of showing derivative one, let's show derivative two. So you can see what happens at this point where we have that inflection is there's kind of a swing up in the graph and then down right there is that inflection point. And then the second inflection point corresponds to the second um, point where there is a, an equivalence point is right there. And you can also read the volume at that same point there. Okay, So that's what first and second derivatives do for you. 
what you want to do in this lab is to save all three graphs and explain what all those graphs are about. So you want to go, you want to copy this graph, right click, copy. Now what you can do if you're really good at this and you want to be really careful is to put your vertical um, line here, your interpolate line, interpolate line, and find the point where you want to be. Let's say, whoop, really big jump there. See where it's going back and forth between above and below zero there? That's pretty close. And that says 36.05 milliliters there. 36.02 milliliters there. Pretty close to where we were before. 36. Oh, I'm sorry, 36.00 is what we assumed it to be in the first derivative graph. All right, and we can do it over here as well. If you're really good, you can leave that line there. It's hard to do. You kind of move your move the pointer off the screen like this, and then move it back on the screen to get close. I'm going to slide the pointer off. Here we go. And I can move the, the little circle back manually by pressing my left arrow and get it to where I want it. Now I can right click and save it right there. And that will actually save those values showing on the screen. Let's go back to our first derivative again. Options, graph options, first derivative. Whoop, first derivative. Show that. Let's go to our peak right here. Pretty get I'm gonna move off the screen just a little bit up here. Let's move it over just a bit more. There we go. Get off the screen. Slide back with the left arrow. I find the peak. There's the peak. Now if I right click, I can copy that graph with that vertical line right there, and I'll have the values showing on the screen. Let's go over here and find um, a Google page, a Google Docs page. I'm just going to create one just to show you what we would do when we paste it there. Now I'm creating a new document. Of course you have one that you're going to be, um, you already have a lab reporting document that you're going to be putting all this into. I'm just going to right click and paste it in here so you can see we can put that graph right into a Google document. So there it is, and it's actually showing the values on the screen. If I go back to Logger Pro one more time, let's go back and show um, just the pH without the derivatives on there. Okay, I can also leave my interpolate line right at that point. I can find that 36 milliliters point on this graph. I'm going to slide it off to the top here a bit. All right. Now I'm going to use my left arrow and move it back until I get to 36. Oh, there's where I want to be. And I can indicate for the viewer of my graph where that inflection point is located. Right click, copy, go to the Google document where I want to save it, and paste. And there's the graph with the interpolate line there. There, there's the interpolate line. But that's showing the actual volume at that point. And you can use that to illustrate when you write your figure labels exactly what your inflection point would be and exactly what volume of base should be used when you're doing your titration stoichiometry to determine the actual concentration of your original acid.